In this video, we're going to be evaluating another improper integral of the first type. So we're going to have an integral over um, an infinite interval. Um, but the first couple of examples that we did um, were um, more basic in terms of what was required for the integration techniques. We were able to just use a rule. So now we want to start um, having examples where we have to do something maybe a little bit more involved in terms of the integration techniques in addition to having to rewrite our integral as a limit. Um, so you can think of this, this section as um, being really a big um, culminating section in which we're, we're going to be using limits, but we're also going to be using any of the different um, integration techniques that we've learned so far um, to find the antiderivative that we then need to um, use to evaluate our integral. So here I have the um, integral from 0 to infinity of um, x over the square root of um, x to the fourth plus 1 dx. Okay, so my function at least is continuous on the interval from 0 to infinity. Okay, 0 is not a problem here, um, but it is improper because I have that infinity in there. So I know that my very first step before I do anything else is to write this as a limit. Um, so I'm going to write this as a limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b of x over the square root of x to the fourth plus 1 dx. So you want to remember you always write as a limit first, okay? In terms of how we award credit on these problems, um, you do want to make sure you write it as a limit, even if you're not quite sure how you're going to do the integration portion. If you rewrite it as a limit, you're showing you understand that it's an improper integral and you know a limit has to be involved. So that will earn you some partial credit. So now let's think about integration techniques here. Notice I do have a square root. Um, now, do I have something squared plus 1 here? Well, I know that x to the 4th, I can write as x squared squared. Okay. Um, so I do have a sort of um, a squared plus x squared type form here. But instead of immediately jumping to trig substitution, it might be helpful to do a u substitution on this first um, before applying a trig substitution. Because notice, um, if I do look at that x to the fourth as x squared squared, okay, if I let u be equal to x squared, okay, then I see that my du of 2x dx, okay, is going to be helpful because I do have this x dx in the numerator, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do a u substitution on this first, just as an initial step to simplify things. I also want to show um, how we'll use u substitution when we're doing one of these improper integrals. So remember that these limits here to start with were x limits, okay? So if I'm going to do a u substitution, I now need to have um, u limits in my next integral. Okay, well when x was um, 0, u would be equal to 0 squared, so this will still be 0. Um, but when x was equal to b, now I'm going to have u of b, which will be b squared. So now my limits will be from 0 to b squared. The x dx part will be 1 half du. And this will be over the square root of u squared plus 1. Okay, so now it's a little bit more clear that a um, trick substitution is going to be helpful. Okay, so next we're going to use trig substitution. So we started with a u substitution, now we're going to use trig substitution. So see how we're already using a variety of techniques here. So I'm going to let u be equal to tangent of theta. So my du is secant squared theta d theta. So what am I going to have here? Well, I have a limit as b goes to infinity. I'm going to have an integral. Now this new integral is going to be with respect to yet another variable. So I'm going to need theta limits. Okay. So let's see. The 1 half du part, I can pull that 1 half out in front. du is going to become secant squared theta d theta. Okay, and then I know that that square root part is going to simplify with um, a trig identity. So I can go over here and just do some of that, 
that algebra, just as long as I do show that work. So u squared plus 1 under the square root is going to become the square root of tan squared theta plus 1 when I replace u with tan theta. Well, we know that tan squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. And when I take that square root, because my theta here is actually restricted to between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, I can take the square root and just get the positive um, root there, which is secant theta. So we can go ahead and write secant theta in here. So what about the limits? So when u is equal to 0, OK, well, I would have 0 equals tan theta. And I know that if theta is 0, tangent of 0 equals 0. So this is still going to stay 0. So what about when u equals b squared? Well, then I would have b squared equals tan theta. Okay. Well, that means theta must be tan inverse of b squared. Okay. Or we can use the other notation and say that it's arctan of b squared. So I have 0 to arctan of b squared. Okay, well notice that this secant squared over secant theta can simplify, so I'm going to have the limit as b goes to infinity, and I think I'll just go ahead and change back my colors here. So I've got this limit, b goes to infinity, 1 half my integral from 0 to arctan of b squared, and this will be of secant theta d theta. Okay, so notice how we have to use our antiderivative rules here. Remember the antiderivative of secant theta is log of secant theta plus tangent theta. And this is evaluated from 0 to arctan of b squared. OK. So now we can plug in our bounds from 0 to arctan of b squared. I'm going to have to go on to the next page here. So we're going to have this is equal to our limit as b goes to infinity of 1 half. We'll have log of secant of arctan of b squared plus tangent of arctan of b squared. OK minus log of secant of 0 plus tangent of 0. OK, so now we want to look to simplify this. Well, secant of 0 we know is equal to 1, since cosine of 0 is 1 and secant 0 is 1 over cosine. So we know this is going to be 1. We also know tangent is of 0 is 0. So this is going to end up being log of 1, which will be 0. OK, so part of that simplifies quite a bit for us. So what about the rest of this? Well, we're going to have to figure out how to simplify um, secant of arctan of b squared. OK, well, um, we know that theta is an angle that's equal to arctan of b squared, OK, which means that tangent of theta is equal to b squared. So to figure out what secant of arctan of b squared is, that's the same thing as saying what secant of theta for a particular right triangle here where tangent of theta is equal to b squared. So if I have theta here, um, tan theta is b squared or b squared over 1. So that's opposite over adjacent is b squared over 1, which means that this hypotenuse is the square root of 1 plus b squared squared or b to the fourth. Okay, So that just means that secant theta then is equal to the hypotenuse, 1 plus um, b to the fourth under the square root, divided by adjacent, which is 1. Okay, So this secant of arctan um, b squared simplifies to the square root of 1 plus b to the fourth. And then when I have tan of arctan, um, those are inverse functions of each other. So they undo each other. So we just have b squared there. OK, so now we want to just think about this limit. What's the limit as b goes to infinity of this quantity? Well, the inside part there is b goes to infinity. The square root of 1 plus b to the fourth plus b squared would also be going to infinity as b gets very large. The sum of these two very large quantities would also get very large. So thinking about our log function, 
okay, which looks like this, has a um, vertical asymptote here at the y-axis, but grows slowly, but bigger and bigger towards infinity. So if the inside of the log function here is going to infinity, okay, then log of something that's getting larger and larger and larger is also going to get larger and larger and larger. So this limit will be equal to infinity. So we would say, so the integral diverges. And that would be our conclusion to this example.